Oh, we are live. Hello, this is Robert Lunchy from Course Creek Consulting, and welcome to the Course Creek Consulting live streamcast show, um, where we're streaming out to millions around the world today. And um, we have a really cool show today, uh, a fun interview. Um, we have with us today, Jeff Cobb. Jeff Cobb is, he's going to be a little embarrassed when I say this, but I think it's, <laughs> I think it's probably true. I've been like an icon in the e-learning knowledge transformation business. He's been doing this for a long time. Um, he's the founder of Learning Revolution. If you go to learningrevolution.net, um, which I highly recommend that you do, sign up for his newsletters, read his blogs, Really, they are just awesome and very informative if you're interested in online courses. It's also the author of this book, Leading the Learning Revolution, right? which I bought a few years ago. And um, I have to say, he's also the e-learning advisor for CourseCreek.com. If you go out and look at our team page, you'll see him right up there at the top of the page where he belongs. Um, and last but not least, um, Jeff is a student of the vocalist studio. <laughs> uh, it's, it's true. Uh, this is how Jeff and I met. Um, I, I, I run another business, which is uh, for singers. I'm a voice coach in another life, and, and we have a lot of fun with that. And Jeff purchased my training program once, and um, I was quite flattered by that. I looked into, uh, who's this cool guy that bought my, my, my course? And I looked at him and realized, oh, he wrote this book, Leading the Learning Revolution, in regards to online courses and teaching people online, which is what I was doing at the time. And um, so I bought the book, read the book, and from that point forward, we have enjoyed a, a, a friendship through the years. Um, uh, many years went by. Um, I continued to do that and grew and matured, and Jeff probably did the same as well. And at some point, not too long ago, a couple of years ago, I picked up the phone and I called Jeff. I said, guess what? I'm gonna do some online coursework. I want to try try some new things. I want to help some people out. And and Jeff drilled me down like, well, okay, well, what's it all about? How are you gonna do this? And so, well, this is the plan. We're gonna do a do it all for you. We're gonna help people out and do everything. And Jeff sort of said to me, I'll never forget something along the lines of, if you're actually going to build platforms for these people and do everything for them, I'm in. <laughs> I'm in <laughs> because my peeps out at at a, at a learning revolution could use that help. All right, so that's how Jeff and I met, and um, uh, he's also been a, a, a good friend and a good mentor to me as well. So um, welcome, Jeff, to um, Course Creek's little interview show here. Thanks, yeah. that was quite an introduction. I, I, I do want to um, uh, reassure folks though, that we're not gonna sing a duet here. At least I don't, I don't plan to participate in a duet. So. <laughs> well, well, I'm the host. <laughs> <laughs> We, we can sing the rose. <laughs> oh, wow, that, 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 that would be a, a traffic magnet, I'm sure. <laughs> that, that would be pretty awesome. Okay. All right. So um, uh, that's fine. I do have to ask you real quick, though. Um, what happened to your vocal training? I, I've never really had a chance to really just sort of like drill you on that. I'm being your voice coach at the moment. I'm uh -huh. holding you accountable. Um, what happened with that? Most of them, just a poor student, um, or, or at least in, in, in that part of my life. But um, but but I I did take I took uh, you know good inspiration and, and, and tips from you, and I do I do soldier on. I keep uh, I mean I was telling you before we came on um, air that uh, my my children are subjected to this. I do sing quite a lot, you know. Okay. Sit, sit there, strum strum my guitar. I write some songs. I'll, I'll play and sing those. I cover songs, but it's uh mostly just the living room scene at this point. I'm not out, uh, you know, on the club circuit or anything. So. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. Just know that um, as your coach, um, you, I, I am available to help you seriously. Um, uh, if you wanted to go in and like brush up on some of the new warm ups and things, and I'm yeah. just going to take a quick minute. Um, the vocalist studio actually sits inside a learning management system called Kajabi that a lot of you folks are probably familiar with or read about. For sure, you can read a lot about Kajabi and all the learning management systems out at Jeff's uh, blog and his emails. He's super good at 
not missing a detail and, and doing a real fair and honest review of these platforms. But I'll just tell you as, as a course creator who's used all kinds of platforms for about 16 courses, Kajabi has been the best platform I've ever used before. And um, it just sort of, it speaks to the creator. It knows what the creator wants when you're trying to create a blog or a page or a new product. And so I'm gonna put a little plug in for Kajabi. And if you have any questions about that, you can talk to Jeff or myself and we can give you some more details on it because I'm actually a user and really happy about it. All right. So let's get on with the uh, some more good stuff. Jeff, you are you know, an author, a consultant, uh, the founder of Learning Revolution, the online magazine, which is just fantastic. Uh, I guess the owner, founder of Tagoras. Mm -hmm. It's a bit of a mystery to me. I'm not sure what that is. Um, <clears throat> um, tell us about your work. Tell us, you know, where maybe what your priorities are. What, what what is it that you do? And if you could just hit on on all of those business elements, it'd be mm -hmm. interesting. So people can get to know you better. Sure, sure. So, I mean, my my whole focus um, in in all of my work is um, is lifelong learning, adult lifelong learning. That that is the everything I do is focused around that and more specifically around the business of adult lifelong learning, continuing education, professional development. And people don't tend to think about it, um, but that is a huge, huge business. It, we often talk about there being a third sector of education. So you've got kind of pre-K through 12, you've got higher education, all of that covers, you know, maybe the first 25 years of, or so of your life, if you're lucky enough to get all of that. But then after that, you got another 50, 60, 70 years at this point where you got to be out there learning and changing and growing and adapting, particularly in the world we live in today. And so there, there's always been, you know, organizations, businesses that will serve people who are out there in that other 50 years. Um, but what we did at Tagoras was to really start focusing on that as a market and as a business. And so you mentioned Tagoras and that being sort of a mystery. Tagoras is just really the, the company that's behind three different brands that really serve that, that market. Um, we're all about serving the people and the organizations that are helping lifelong learners in one way or another. So we've got Learning Revolution, which you mentioned, that's really focused on you know, solo entrepreneurs, small businesses, course creators uh, who are out there in, engaging in their particular niche uh, around different topics. We've got leading learning, which is really focused mostly on uh, like trade and professional associations, continuing education divisions, the people who do like formal continuing education, professional development type programs, huge business. Nobody ever thinks about it, but there's a lot going on there. And then we have mission to learn, which focuses on the lifelong learners themselves. You know, how do we help people become better lifelong learners as part of this, this third sector, this other 50 years? And so I describe Tagoras now as kind of a educational media and consulting company. We've got those educational media channels. We're blogging, we're podcasting, doing webinars, events, um, you know, courses, uh, curated newsletters. And then on a pretty limited basis, more and more limited basis, uh, we provide consulting services for certain types uh, of clients. And so that, that kind of brings that all together. Tagoras is like the, the umbrella under which learning revolution, leading learning and mission to learn sit. It all happens. Um, what does a consulting engagement look like to you? Who is the person or the entity, the company that comes to you for consulting? Mm -hmm. I'm just sort of curious about that. And what, what would you typically be consulting um, if you're going to really sort of sell your time in a sense as, as mm -hmm. an expert? I'm curious, what, 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 what does that work look like to you? Yeah, I mean, all, all of our consulting is big. Um, project-based consulting, it's okay. usually going to be with a large um, trade or professional association or other large organization that's serving the continuing education, professional development market. And they're usually looking for, they need to, they need to transform. They need to take their strategy to a different level. It's, it's a different world out there. We'll talk about this whole concept of revolution, you know, which applies, you know, broadly. They've got more competition than ever before. They've got um, learners who are expecting more than ever before. So how do they grow their businesses, ex expand their reach, reach the right people, 
have more impact yeah. with what they're doing. And in our world, it's also about generating revenue. We don't do corporate training. We're about organizations that are actually in a market. They have to sell, you know, what they're creating. So we're, we're wrapping up a project right now with a very large um, uh, American association um, in the healthcare space where they hired us to come in and basically create a future of learning um, strategy for them. So how do they take their organization into the, into the future of learning, grow their business, have better impact? That's where we usually consult. And, and as you know, you know, it's with those larger organizations. We've done less with like the, the, the smaller businesses, the solopreneurs, um, the, the, the people who would be more in that sort of learning revolution type market. And that's that's one of the reasons uh, I said that is the reason we've, we've partnered with Course Creek um, is to, you know, to, to be able to, to direct people to, to very good consulting help when it's not really the, the, the sort of uh, area that we would be consulting in. Cool. Thank you. Now I understand you better. All right. I understand you better now. Thanks for asking. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, um, so as the author of uh, Learning Revolution and the online the online magazine LearningRevolution.net, yes, mm -hmm. I'm giving you a plug because it's so good. Um, what is the revolution? When, when did you write the book? Mm -hmm. What was the revolution? What was your thought process when you wrote the book? Why did you write the book? What inspired you to write the book? And then some time has passed. What is the future of said revolution? Mm -hmm. um, if you could give us a sort of a past, present, future um, about this, if you could. That'd be really interesting for us. Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, I'll jump into the, the, the present first, though, because I mean, Okay. What you and I are doing right now is the revolution. I mean, this is, or this is, a, this is a major part of it. I mean, you think about this. You know, you and I have been around for a while. We're not, we're not spring chickens here. Um, you know, think back to the, the <laughs> at least, at least me. You know, think back to the, the '90s. I mean, it was inconceivable that you and I would be sitting across the country from each other. We would just open up a laptop, or for that matter, a mobile phone or an iPad, whatever. You know fire up a video service uh, online and with an internet connection and a laptop, basically be engaging, you know, in, in, a, in a conversation that's going to help, we hope, you know, people who are listening, learn and, 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 and grow themselves and, and grow their businesses. So we've been able to create this, this learning experience here for next to nothing. I mean, you know, we, we didn't have to go out and spend much in the way of, you know, extra money to be able to do this. We already had a computer. We already had an internet connection. That's just part of our lives, you know, these days. Yeah. And so we decided, okay, we're going to create this experience. Um, and, you know, you and I, what? We exchanged a couple of emails and here we are and, and we're doing it. And we've got people all over the world who have the potential to, to watch this both live in real time and later on when it's recorded, be able to refer back to it over time. So, you know, I think we've all gotten so used to that. We're all sort of soaking in it, you know, so much right now that that we forget just like how big that is or how big that was. And so, you know, to go back some, when I wrote Leading the Learning Revolution, you know, I'd already been in the world of e-learning for, well, I guess 15 years, you know, at, the, at that point, at least. I mean, I started in the mid 90s, you know, and back then, I mean, we were we were creating high end video courses, working with top universities, you know, to, to distribute them around the world. I mean, it's like a course era, you know, type thing that we were doing way back when way, it was way too early to be doing it. We, we found out after burning through, you know, tens of millions of dollars. But I mean, it cost a lot of money then to do that stuff. Um, it was all just sort of replicating what happened in the classroom and trying to put it online in one way or the other. But, you know, roll forward that 10 or 15 years up to the point where I started writing Leading the Learning Revolution. And it was just clear that, that things were changing so much uh, at, at that point. And it was hard to say exactly where they would go. But like at that point, um, you know, I could see Udemy coming along. I could see some of these um, newer platforms, like you've mentioned, Kajabi, um, Thinkific, um, platforms like that were, were just starting to emerge at that time. And it was just, it was just clear that the technology was making it so possible to create and distribute different types of learning experiences. Um, it was making it possible, just as importantly, for anybody to access those learning experiences. You know, so easy to put a course on Udemy, easy for anybody to get to that course on, on Udemy. And there are countless other examples of it out there. And it doesn't have to be just courses because, you know, the point I'll make in a minute is it's not just about courses. 
But so, you know, technology's just exploded the ability to create learning experiences and the ability to access and participate in learning experiences. And that's still going on and it's going to continue to go on. I mean, now we're starting to have, you know, artificial intelligence come into it uh, to drive both the creation and the consumption. Uh, so, you know, that's going to be a huge thing going forward. Eventually, we'll get a lot more out of what's possible with things like virtual reality. That's going to become a lot easier than, than it is right now. But there's just huge shift that's happened because of what technology has made possible. You know, and, and I don't mean like the, the, the technology itself. I don't like to get too focused on that. It's the possibilities that technology opens up. So that's sort of like part one of, you know, what makes up the learning revolution. Part two of what makes up the learning revolution, and I think this is just going to continue to, to grow and evolve, and things like AI are going to impact this as well, is that we just we know so much more now about how to create effective learning experiences, what is an effective learning experience than we ever knew before. I mean, much more than we knew even a decade ago. And part of that's because, um, you know, neuroscience has gotten so much uh, more capable in terms of being able to you know, actually image people's brains, understand what's happening in people's brains. It's because, you know, social psychology, uh, behavioral and cognitive psychology have gotten so much better, partly because of being able to use those tools. Oh, we got a visitor there. Nice. Um, sorry, sorry. <laughs> uh, so, so the combination is that we're now able to, you know, well, we're able to take the, the human beings who do this stuff and educate them better about how to do it well. We're able to take the technology um, that makes things possible and, and at least potentially use that technology in the most effective, impactful way to reach people and teach them and, and change their their lives. Um, so that that's kind of part two, just really understanding learning and really being able to connect uh, uh, learners with with great learning experiences uh, that that's changed as well. So so I feel like, you know, even though I was talking about a revolution back in 2013 and there was certainly one you know bubbling then brewing up, then it's like we're it's still going on or we're entering a second wave of it now. I don't know. But, you know, we're, we're still in the midst of, of things changing uh, so much. There's still just you know so much so much opportunity um, out there in front of us. Indeed, as you were telling your story, I was reliving mine a little bit. Mm -hmm. I remember back back when with the Vocalist Studio, which is a vocal training program um, with training content for singers, folks, and where I would drive all around town to burn discs, burn <laughs> DVDs uh -huh. and discs. And yeah, our, yeah, when's the last time you burned a disc? I can't even remember the last time I did that. I think. Um, the last time I burned a disc was the last time the disc burning and graphic stamp people on the disc screwed up the order. Uh -huh. so that was the last time I uh -huh. burned a disc. And quite literally, I mean, just looking back at the, the fuel and the time and the effort that I went into to just get these things, these discs done, then I would fit manually stuff these discs into a sleeve on the book. I think you probably got one of those with the discs. Mm -hmm. At some point, I realized this is madness. This isn't working. And the technology change that allowed us to just take the videos that were burned on the disc and just stream it through yeah. a learning management system. And that was a huge, huge benefit. Yeah. And um, another, another thing here that that is that I noticed um, that I think sort of coattail on your point in terms of, uh, of exposure and distribution is when I put my mini courses up on on Udemy uh, for platform funneling, I, I noticed very quickly, oh my goodness, there's there's like 179 countries that are now purchasing this product. Yeah. And when I go and look at the stats, back in the day, it used to be uh, US, Canada, UK, Australia, mm -hmm. maybe some Germans, a few Italians to throw in, and you know that's about it. Yeah. Now, you go to the stats at Udemy, and I'm seeing people from countries that I can barely, I, I'm not even really sure that I, I didn't know they existed. Mm -hmm. And I know for a fact that people that have purchased that product would never be able to or never even know about me or probably never spend, you know, the 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 investment on the full offer. Yeah. Uh, but um, that's, that's true. And I, I underscored something here. I tell people all the time, students, partners, Course Creek, TBS, it doesn't matter what it is. It's a miracle. Mm -hmm. What we're doing right now yeah. is a miracle. You want to know what a miracle looks like? It's this. Yeah. 
you know, and a flying drone on Mars. You know, they're, 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 it's just amazing. So couldn't agree with you more. Um, okay. And so the future is AI? Well, the future, I mean, AI is certainly a big part of the future, but I, and I'll tell you why, because I think there are, um, or at least, you know, why I think why, uh, you can decide whether you think I'm, you know, crazy or not, but uh, I think, uh, I mean, they're, they're, they're two sort of dichotomies for me that are the de defining factors for the future of learning. I think they're the, I think they are for the future of business too. So to the extent that you know learning and business intersect for you, which it does for a lot of your uh, listeners, these two things matter. Um, and one is is going to be a move from and there already is. Uh, in fact, again, we're sort of illustrating it a, a, a move from transactions to relationships. Um, so it's less about the the the, the one time purchase, the one time learning experience and more about you know an ongoing relationship with your customers and with your learners and you you noted you know i, I bought your um uh, training you know quite a while back um and that was great and that gave me some great things but that hasn't really been the the, the core of you know our work together um it's really been the ongoing relationship um that we've built and to the extent you know, like you said you know i can come back to you at any point and say hey hey rob let's let's catch up around you know, how I'm finally going to be able to hit that one note that I haven't been able to hit uh, uh, so far. And that's because of an, we, we've built a relationship uh, over time. It wasn't just me going and putting in a credit card, getting a course, and then, you know, maybe you see me again someday, maybe you don't. Uh, so I, I think building that relationship and the, and the reason that's so important, and it goes to the, the second dichotomy, and it's, and it's where something like AI will play such a tremendous role, is I think we're finally starting to get and get traction on the idea that learning is a process, not an event. Um, and I'll repeat that learning is a process, not an event. If you think about it, you know, any lecture you go to, any course you, you listen to, uh, any article you read, you know, you'll, you'll take some little bit away from that, but we know you're going to forget 90% of it, if not more, you know, within a couple of days, it's, it just, it, it evaporates. The only way that you actually move things into long-term memory and can, can start making them a part of your day-to-day -day life and, and practice um, is by coming back to them again and again, repetition, deliberate practice, spacing out learning over time. That, that's the only way we learn. You know, we in, in college, you can cram and get through a, an exam that, that works for gaming the system. But we all know two weeks later, you don't know jack about what you did on that exam. You just made it through that day, basically. That's not learning. Um, yeah, and you couldn't care less. And you yeah. couldn't care less as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so learning, recognizing that learning is a, a process not an event. And this goes back to relationships and transactions. That's why you have to keep that relationship over time with your learners. It's why something like artificial intelligence can be so powerful because artificial intelligence can help um, on an automated basis, uh, 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 an intelligent basis to continue to bring a learner back to whatever the, the content uh, the, the practice opportunities uh, they need to be able to continue to improve. I mean, if you think of like a platform like Duolingo, you know, for anybody who's, uh, you know, tried to learn a language. I mean, you know, if you learn, try to learn a language back in the day in, in, in college, you know, I took some French. Um, I, I mean, I can barely speak a word of French uh, at, at this point. Um, and it's because I never, I never really had the practice opportunities. There never was really that, you know, you, you take it for a semester and then, you know, two semesters later, you haven't looked at French in a while, it's all gone, you know. Um, but with something like Duolingo, you know, it's, it's continually feeding you new practice opportunities. If you, if you jump off for a couple of weeks, it actually knows it and it'll back up and say, hey, let's, let's refresh and, you know, and, and, and then work our way forward again. That's just a very you know simple instance of uh, of AI at work, but learning platforms are increasingly we're going to see that starting to mainstream into learning management systems and into different types of learning platforms, so that it's going to help you help your learners help themselves over time to actually treat learning as a, a process. And hey, that's all part of you know an ongoing relationship with the, the learner too. Um, so that that's that that's where I think things are are headed. why we invited you on this on this interview that's really 
good stuff. Building relationships. It's not a transaction. It's building relationships with an investment with the people, with your teacher, with your students, putting in a little bit of quality time, like, like the regularly scheduled group call. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, um, it's simple stuff like that too. It's not, you know, it's not rocket science. You just got to make it part of your, your practice. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And artificial intelligence. That's just great. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, what are two or three of the most urgent pain points your traffic, your readers for learningrevolution.net have that, and that you hear often? Mm -hmm. And what advice would you have for these people? So we have all this traffic, all these people coming in to understand learning management systems and needing help on your website, which mm -hmm. is, by the way, very grateful. That's the those are the folks that you've introduced me to here at Course Greek. And um, what's your what what are their pain points? What are they looking for? Yeah, it's and it's funny too. You know, we uh, in in the, the the work that I do and the work that sort of Tagoras is the umbrella for. I mean, we serve from the very very small you know solo entrepreneur type business all the way up to the you know, huge multinational um, trade association or uh, that's doing continuing education, professional development. And the, the two pain points are almost, are almost identical look, across that spectrum. Um, the first one is that it can be such a challenge for people to just get started. Um, and this, this is particularly true with, with online um, uh, learning, you know, creating online learning experiences, you know, for the people who haven't done it before, and particularly before this last year, you know, kicked everybody in the butt and made them realize that they they better get online or they're not going to be in the education business uh, anymore. Um, yeah. People would just really get bogged down with getting started, and they still do, even though they know they they have to do it. Um, you know, you get bogged down in thinking about, okay, you know, do I have enough content? You get bogged down and you know, do do I have the uh, the right technology um, for doing this? Um, all of the sort of mechanics that uh, are underneath it, and. You know, I mean, for those people, those organizations, I mean, you just you have to pull back. And this is hard. I mean, this is it's like with any business, this takes discipline um, to do this. But you have to pull back and say, OK, why? Why are we doing this? You know, what kind of outcomes are we trying to achieve by, you know, moving into to online uh, education, which is usually, you know, the, the, the focus of it? Um, what is that? And then, you know, What's what's the smallest first step we can take to to move in that direction concretely to to make some progress to to prove that we can actually do this and then just do that you know don't you don't have to build the the fifty hour course you know uh, you can put together the, the the one hour live webinar that's really focused you know you're going to be ready for feedback from your audience um, and just get out it's the whole minimum viable product you know sort of uh, uh, concept just mm -hmm. getting out there and doing that and. I mean, you can tell people that all day long. I know, um, and, and you know, they still won't necessarily do it. But that is the pain point. They just, you know, you've you've got to be willing to 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 make that leap, um, and then and then be able to learn rapidly. It'd be open to to getting feedback, learning, and and iterating uh, forward. So, and that's true in any business. And then the the second one, in you know, in this kind of online um, uh, education business world, or really education business broadly at this point, is going to. It's going to include, I think, face to face, which is going to come, you know, roaring back in, in the in the late fall, early next year. People are going to be so hungry for seminars and, and conferences and, and those sorts of things because they've been deprived uh, for the last at that point. It'll be, you know, close to two years. Um, but in any case, with all of it, it's it's getting the the, the sales um, that you had hoped and, and thought you'd be able to get. You know, you, you, you built it and they don't come um, basically. And I run into this all the time, you know, and people write me and say, who can I get to do my marketing for me? And I'm like, well, I, you can get people to help you. And in fact, Course Creek is going to be a great one to, to, to help you with your, your marketing, um, be a great one to help you with getting started. Uh, you know, that's why we work with, uh, with you, Robert, and, and your team is, is that Course Creek can provide help around these two issues that I'm highlighting. But at the same time, you know, you're not going to be able to sell effectively unless you go back to that why question, getting strategic and building in marketing from the very beginning, because um, marketing really relates to what are you going to make? You know, what, what, what are you actually going to create a, a course around if it's a, a course and knowing that you've got an idea that actually connects with what your potential learners 
um, want and need. And if you haven't, if you haven't thought that through and done that level of research to to really identify making the right product in the first place, it doesn't matter when you get down the line and say, you know, I need to promote this thing. Nobody's going to be listening because you don't have something that's going to connect uh, with with your audience. Um, so you know, really baking that in that the product, the positioning of the product, thinking through the pricing. You know, all of that stuff needs to start before you do the, you know, the shoot the first video or or write the first line of code or whatever it is for for creating a course. And and people just overlook that. Um, so, you know, neither both of these take uh, take some discipline, take some 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 planning, um, but people will continually not do it. And so they get bogged down in getting started and they ultimately don't get the sales um, that they were looking for. And, and I'll say again, you know you guys your team your, your people who can help with that because you'll you'll get people to be methodical about that and and to, to think about it and, and to plan it and to, to really get a process in place that's going to get them from you know the, the notion that they want to be able to get out there into the education market to the reality of actually succeeding at doing it mm -hmm. and do the heavy lifting building inside yeah. the learning management system as well i feel compelled i i wrote this down this is my little book and and it's it's hitting on what you're hitting it. This is a, a we have a mutual friend, Forrest Linden, asked him a similar similar question. He said, uh, "What's the advice on developing an idea? Um, understand what you want to do, understand what you're good at. Mm -hmm. Do um, what do people have a problem with that you can solve? Mm -hmm. Clarify that. Clarify what the, what are they willing to pay for, and are they willing to pay enough to compensate you for your." time and effort that's a sort of similar so not, not a bad formula to work with but that's great and so what i have here is i have from you jeff make a plan mm -hmm. and just get started just get started and when you get started get started on an mvp if you guys aren't familiar with mvp is it's sort of a popular uh, lean term yeah. uh, minimum viable product meaning i think just in simple terms it's just sort of just don't stick your neck out too far just get started on something simple that's achievable and then and then analyze the results of that what needs to be tweaked what doesn't and then grow from there um yep yeah good that would be wise i've done projects without an mvp mvp before and it's a mistake you put a lot of time and energy into stuff and it doesn't you realize looking back oh gosh i probably should have not bitten off so much to chew so yeah, it's, I mean, you know, anytime you're starting and growing a business, I mean, you, you know this, um, I mean, time is everything, like time and resources, you, you only have so much of those, you know, and so you, you can't be all things to all people, you, you can't make every product, you know, everything that it could be out of the gate. I think the main thing that you're always looking for as a, as a business owner, um, I think this is true of just sort of being a learner too, that you're always looking for is leverage. I mean, leverage is just such a key word. Where do you find the places where if you put a little bit of effort there, you're going to get the biggest possible returns? And an MVP helps you to do that because, you know, you get out there with some ideas and you find out pretty quickly, okay, this part works, this part doesn't. And I, so I'm going to invest in this part that worked and we'll keep growing that. And you, and you keep, you know, that people talk about iteration a lot and, you know, ideation or whatever. I mean, that's the core of it. That's what you're looking for is you have to find those leverage points and keep repeating those leverage points. And the, you know, the people who end up being really successful in any business, they're just whether, whether intuitively or, but usually because they have a lot of discipline and they're really focused on it, they keep finding those leverage points. Golden. It's true. Took me a long time to figure that out. But once I figured that out, I literally transformed my life. Yeah. It took me way too long. <laughs> Did it really? You seem a little smarter than me. So I was like a, I was a voice coach, folks, that I would saw my time to do on on a one on one lessons. I still do that a little bit, but there was it was had had success, but there was a period of time where it things weren't working from a personal perspective. And I don't. This is about Jeff, not about me. But hopefully, you'll get something from this. And uh, something wasn't right in the business. And mm -hmm. after talking to mentors like Jeff and stuff, I realized, oh, no scalability, no mm -hmm. leverage. And I literally thought to myself, okay, from this point forward, I'm going to focus and fixate on scalability, leverage. Mm -hmm. well, online courses is one of the best ways, if it's successful, to get scalability and leverage. And in fact, Jeff and I even did a show on that, didn't we, Jeff? We did indeed. Yeah. Um, okay. 
cool. That's super important, folks. Especially you coaches out there that are doing one-on-one -on -one work. Okay. Best part of the show. Would you be kind enough to share your hero story? Mm -hmm. A time in your life or career you can remember when you felt like you had hit rock bottom, perhaps. How did you recover from that? What happened? What's the story? How'd you keep going? How did you rise like a phoenix and begin to win to become the success you are today? I feel like this ties... Uh ties back great to the singing stuff. Cause that's like, that's like the stuff of a country song, you know, when you're like rock bottom and then <laughs> build your, build your way back up. We're forcing Jeff to be vulnerable here. A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it's funny too. Cause I mean, uh, I think people get asked for the, these types of, um, uh, stories, experiences a lot. And, and it's because we all love it. Cause it's, you know, it's, it's dramatic when you can, sort of have that defining moment, sort of the, the you know, the crucible that, that defines the, the, the leader that the, the hero emerges from. And, um, and I, you know, I look back across my life and it's, it's hard. I mean, it's hard for me to find that sort of big thing like that. And, and I, I was, I, I've been thinking about this some, cause it, it occurred to me at some point, you know, it's really, I think maybe for most people, I know it's certainly true for me. It, it's, it's more about kind of, um, everyday heroism, uh, and that's what, what I mean by that is, you know, just day in and day out, you know, showing up, persevering and, and, and being willing to make the decisions to to do things that maybe you just don't feel like doing um, at, at that point in time. And I often think it's by you know, like repeating that over and over again that you wind up um, almost without even realizing it at the sort of, you know, heroic shaping story. and. You know, like the, the place where I would apply that in, in my own life, I mean, there, there are a number of them. Um, I think most people have a number of these in their lives is, um, you know, the, the first business that I started and, and grew and, and sold. And, uh, you know, I don't think I realized so much at, at the time because I was just, you know, sort of soaking in it um, exactly what was going on. And we were, I mean, we were pretty successful in, in the end. I mean, we built a company that good business, sold it, you know, went on and worked for the company that bought us um, for a while, um, didn't retire or anything. So it wasn't, you know, like a, a, a dot com millionaire sort of situation, but, um, but did okay. But at the same time, I mean, there were just many, many, many days where, you know, you'd show up, I'd show up, we were, we were creating a, we were doing a learning management system. Um, you know, it was, a, it was a software platform, you know, there were, countless issues with the software, uh, day in and day out, like there's always something, you know, problems with the developers, um, you know, causing complaints with the customers. Um, you know, you, you have to continually try to find good employees and keep those good employees. I, I know there were multiple occasions where, you know, I was up all night tossing and turning, wondering if I was going to be able to make payroll uh, or not, you know, and you just, you do that kind of thing, you know, day in and day out. And I mean, it's only been years later when I look back at it and I'm like, man, that was really something, you know, that was, um, that, that, that was tough. Um, it was really tough. Uh, you know, I don't even know if I would choose to, to do it again, you know, to be honest, but I made it through. Um, and I know for me that that was easily one of the most, you know, formative experiences, um, uh, certainly, you know, of my, of my adult life. And I think that happens often for people that it, it is that just, you know, everyday heroism, you know, as I put it, put it, you know, you, you, you're just willing to keep making those decisions that are tough. Um, and then over time they add up into, into, into the story that shapes your life, you know, just showing up, mm. showing up, staying at it. It's not, it's not as sexy as like, you know, having a cape or whatever, but, um, it's, uh, <laughs> but it's, yeah, it's what you got to do. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Forrest lived in a teepee. Okay, I can't. I can't top that. So. <laughs> Go watch the show. It's amazing, actually. It literally was freezing and starving in a teepee. <laughs> okay, and he's then he's a, what can I say? He's a, he's a better man than I am. But uh. I don't know about that. But he decided to make some changes. So okay, so so I kind of get where you're coming from. I uh, uh, and what so what what was it that drove you on? What was it? 
you know, I don't know, financial, financial success. Uh, mm. I, I, you seem like you're very passionate about learning. And so what's some, some, something in there, um, what, what could you say about that? Um, yeah, what, what, was, what was the, what was the heat that was making you show up yeah. and keep going? Yeah. I, I mean, it's a, it's a good question. I, I think, um, I mean, I suspected some of the same things that, you know, do it for everybody. I mean, we all, um, you know, we like, we all like to feel like we're, we're con contributing that we're, we're, we're creating in some way. I mean, even if we don't think of ourselves as an, as an artist per se, but just that, you know, we're, we're doing something substantial day in and day out, uh, with our lives. And, and I, and I, for me, you know, that took the form of, um, uh, of creating a business and, um, you know, feeling like I was you know, truly doing work and, and making something, you know, that was going to have a, a lasting impact. Um, I think, you know, people find that in various ways in the, in the jobs and, and the work that they do uh, in life. I think too, you know, I mean, you know, it is often true that the, 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 the deeper you get into something, you know, the more you engage, the more you create, the more people you start affecting um, with it. And, um, and I know that I became increasingly conscious over time that, you know, I've got this list of customers who are counting on, this all continuing to, to run. I've got, you know, a growing uh, list of employees who are counting on being employed um, tomorrow. Um, so, you, you know, that starts to come into it and it's, you know, what, what's your responsibility to, um, to other people um, as a result of, you know, what, what you've been pursuing based on, on your own motivation. So that, you know, those were some of it. And, and of course, underlying all of that, I mean, like I said at the beginning, like you brought up, you know, I mean, for me, the, the, the driver for the creation, the driver for the business, why I was doing all of this is that, um, the, the, that I do believe in, in, in lifelong learning and just, you know, being able to support that, engage with that in, in a meaningful way. So that, that was all underneath the, there, too, is just sort of my, my particular um, interest and in, in motivation in it. Yeah, passion. For, you know, for, for, yeah, I, I, I feel compelled to. I want to ask you because you're sort of like me. You got a lot going on and a lot, a lot of stuff, uh, a lot, a lot of business that, a lot, a lot, lot of plates in the air that are spinning. There's something just sort of pragmatic, and so we didn't rehearse for this. So uh, my apologies. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm not sure I would say we re rehearsed for the other stuff either. <laughs> he's getting nervous. <laughs> um, how do you stay organized? Do you have a system? How do you plan your day? How do you because guys like me and you and entrepreneurs, one of the things that we deal with on a regular basis is just too much going on, not enough, not enough capital to pay for an army of people to take care of everything yeah. for me. So, you know, how do you admin and execute and sell and and lead and delegate and create like we're doing today? Jeff, is there a system? Is there a way that you organize your day and your week that you are proud of that you think is, is a good idea that me and others might be able to benefit from? Mm. I mean, I can, you know, I can talk about, you know, some s specific tactics as to, you know, how I sort of organized task I'm going to do and, and, and things like that. I'm mean, happy to talk about that some, but I, but I think probably bigger, bigger picture where it all has to, to start. And I mean, it goes back to some of the things I was saying earlier about um, where people stumble and, and that sort of thing is I've found over time that um, I have a, a deep and, and deepening appreciation for strategy and for strategic thinking. And what that means for me is that, you know, strategy should fundament fundamentally be about how you're going to make decisions. Like a good, a good strategy should make your decisions easier. And I think the, the inability to make the, the right decisions and do it on a timely basis is the main thing that hangs people up from a productivity and uh, organization standpoint, because you just end up, you know, like you said, I mean, there's too much to do. You can always come up with, you know, a million different things to do on any day. So how do you decide what the right things to do are? And, and for me, and I'm not, I'm not going to 
claim by any stretch that, that I've got this down. I'll, I'll never have this um, down, but I think I have gotten better at it over time. And the keys for me is, you know, I, I personally have to take time usually at the end of each day and at the beginning of each day. And, I'll, and then I'll usually also devote a chunk of time to it over the weekend, really just to step back and, and look at, you know, what am I doing overall? Um, how does that fit with where we're trying to take, um, both the business to, you know, to gorse the business, but then just life in, in general. And what can I cut? I mean, what can I get out of there that just, it really does not relate um, or is not contributing significantly to where we're trying to take the business that I can just get off the list. Um, and then, and then in addition to that, where are the things, this goes back to leverage, where are the places where if I put my effort to it, it's going to create the, the greatest opportunities, have the most payback for the business and where are the places where it doesn't have to be me, um, but I need somebody to do this stuff to create leverage. And the trick with all of that is, is, you know, that, that's not a set it and forget it sort of thing. I mean, that's why I said, you know, I, I'll, I'll think about this in the evening and in the morning as I'm reviewing my schedule for the day and the week. I'll think about it some on the, on the weekend. You have to keep returning to this stuff and reflecting on it, you know, making, making the time to actually be organized and to make the right decisions. And I think we we can all hear that and say, yeah, that sounds right. That sounds right. But there's something about it that just viscerally, we all resist doing it because when you when you step back and you're reflecting, you know, and, and just trying to make sense of things, it feels like you're not doing anything a lot of times. And we all like, you know, we want to be writing the article or doing the webinar or, you know, whatever it is um, in, in your particular world. And it can be hard to say, no, I don't, I don't need to be doing anything like that right now. I don't need to be creating right now. I need to be stepping back, reflecting, cutting, finding points of leverage, finding things I can hand off. And that has to happen on a continuing basis if it's actually going to work. None of which I'll say I have perfected. That's my, that's my, like, I know that works and I aspire to it and I try to practice it and I get better and better at practicing it. But, um, you know, it's, it takes discipline. Do you find yourself, so I guess, yeah, I mean, I find myself sometimes doing things that I've been doing for years and I and realize, gosh, you know what? I shouldn't be doing this. Someone mm -hmm. else needs to do this and I need to be doing that. Um, yeah. Obviously. Yeah. Yeah. Gosh, that's really helpful. So review your strategy, figure out what can be cut. In other words, like what MVPs aren't working, what, what, issues or projects you're putting energy and time into that are looking like they're not going to return or give you the leverage that you need right mm -hmm. okay and and determining delegating determining what you should do and and what others can do just sort of want to capture your points here i want to get it back to the folks that are watching that's great thank you okay um but when you when you do strategy is it Jeff strategy or are you a are you a lean canvas guy are you a six sigma dude are you do you <laughs> do you follow do you follow any sort of method that's published or that people might be able to uh plug into you know i um i've done various things over time that, I, that i've found helpful um I like i like i like a lot of the um the blue ocean strategy tools that that's one i go back to uh quite a bit um but i've increasingly gotten to the point where i i don't i don't tend to use any specific tool set you know unless i'm in just in a, maybe sometimes in a client situation if i feel like i, I have to um that is just going to help things um but for me i'm just always looking at okay you know, what, what am I trying, what, what are we, what are we trying to be and for who and why, um, basically, you know, and I, I can say, for example, you know, like, you know, we, we have these three different, um, parts of our business because we're trying to serve very distinct audiences with those. Uh -huh. And each of those audiences has a different set of needs. And based on those sets of needs, we do different things. Um, than we do with, uh, you know, like I, I do completely different set of stuff with learning revolution than I do with leading learning. 
than I do with Mission to Learn. And that's because I'm trying to achieve different things with a different audience and it takes different uh, means uh, for doing that. And that's, that, you know, that's really how I look at uh, uh, strategy is, you know, what are those objectives? What are the audiences? And um, what are the sort of the, the, the major uh, approaches to, to doing that in the most effective way without getting down into, you know, the, the, the distinct tactics? Yeah, great. Well, thanks for uh, entertaining my opportunity to drill down and, 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 <laughs> and make a soul search a little bit there. It's helpful. Um, I, there's a, there's a, uh, we're, we're almost done. Uh, we'll get to our, our last little um, sage advice piece here, but I, I do want to ask you this. You and I've talked about it a few times. Is there a uh, online course in you one day? We've done books, maybe another book. Is there a teach to the camera? Jeff Cobb's uh, 10 steps to excellence course or something. Um, Cause you'd certainly would pack quite a punch of authority if you were mm -hmm. to get to work on something like that. Yeah, it's what, you know, um, I mean, I've done courses uh, before I, I've tended more towards um, live or um, sort of uh, extended type uh um, facilitated courses more than the, the sort of on-demand self-paced sort of thing. I feel like that to the extent that, um, that I create any courses going forward, it's going to go back to what I was saying earlier. I mean, they're going to be, they're going to be part of more of an extended, um, process type experience. Cause I, I don't think the future is in courses per se, or what we typically think of, uh, as courses. So, you know, what I mean is, um, for example, something we're thinking about, this is more on the, the leading learning side of the business, but I could see doing something very similar on the um, learning revolution part of the business is we have something called the, the learning business maturity model. And the, this is basically sort of the domains um, and practices that you have to go through to, to really move from being, you know, a, practically a failing learning business to being a really innovative, you know, market leading learning business. And we have this all laid out pretty clearly. Now that would be a, a perfect sort of uh, focus area to create some some short uh, on-demand courses uh, around to explain some of the the aspects of the model. But then I think you know to to real for that to really be impactful for people to to really you know um, change the, the the world that uh, we work in. I think we would want to embed those in an ongoing community. Um, with opportunities for people to share their stories with each other, you know, with, with live sessions to go along with it, um, probably with some, you know, self-directed consulting tools to go with it. So packaging all of that sort of thing together. And, um, and that, that's something we probably will consider doing um, very, very soon. And then I would consider doing something similar to that in, in Learning Revolution. But I don't think you'll see us just get, launch the, um, you know, learning maturity course, and it's just, you know, sign up and, and, and listen to these five videos, uh, sort of thing. Um, for us, that would be that would be in opposition to kind of how we view learning and, and how we try to, uh, to guide people to, to run their businesses. I hear you saying sort of a blended, sort of a blended, uh, blend, blended and extended is, is the way you could put it. Maybe that's a good way to talk about the, the future of, uh, of learning. Um, those experiences should be blended and extended. Yeah. That's what I've been hearing. Good. All right. Now comes the best part of the show. Or the, <laughs> the, second, the second best part of the show. <laughs> Where we did the best part. This is fun, though. Um, and thank you for your valuable time this morning. Um, hey, thanks for having me. Really appreciate it. It's been cool. All right. So I want you to, I'm going to ask you to look to the camera and share some sage words of wisdom to our listeners in two minutes. A, profound lesson or advice you hope they will always remember from viewing this interview today. Go. Uh, yeah, well, n never trust anybody who claims to be wise would be my first uh, uh, piece of advice. So I'm, <laughs> I'm not gonna claim to be wise. Um, I will tell you my particular perspective, which you can decide whether to, you know, this is good or not, but my viewpoint very much in line with everything that um, I've been saying here is that the ability to learn, change and grow is the most powerful and significant gift that human beings have been given. Um, 
I mean, if we, out of all the beings in the world, the fact that we can learn, that we can change, that we can grow is just amazing. And I think for each of us as individuals to be conscious of that, to realize that and to recognize that that's an opportunity that's around us every minute of every day. It's not about taking a course or a class. It's about paying attention to the world and recognizing that we don't have all the answers, that we're always in a position to, to learn and to grow and develop. And then I think for anybody who's helping, you know, others learn, facilitating learning, teaching, that's a huge responsibility. Um, and, and to recognize that, you know, that you're engaging in, in helping human beings with one of the greatest gifts that they have. And to, to take that, it's a huge opportunity, but to take that opportunity, you know, very seriously and, and to view that as, as a responsibility. And I mean, if you do that, you're going to be able to do some of the greatest work there is in the world. Nice. And with that, we will wrap up our Jeff Cobb interview. Jeff, thank you again for, wow, just such great advice and uh, value in this. Um, and uh, really appreciate it. And from a personal perspective, I definitely am grateful for your mentorship and your partnership um, through the years and as of recent. And um, with that, Folks, we're going to say au revoir. I know, I know a couple words in French, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> the one that I can say is au revoir. Très bien. <laughs> Je <ne> super. <laughs> I know those two. And um, thank you, thank you. And uh, I'm Robert Lunchy from Course Creek Consulting. We can help you um, plan, build online courses if you have any questions. And of course, Jeff can too as well. He's our e-learning advisor. Um, wish you guys a great day and um, goodbye. Take care.